There's a lot of excitement, of course, about ChatGPT and now the newer iteration of it, which is GPT-4. OpenAI's models are available for us to test and allow us a closer look at what AI can do. The fact that we can get an inside look into the AI's abilities and behaviors bring an amazement from those interested in technology. And there are other AIs and they are being developed by the largest tech company in the world. While the average person is amazed at the capability of AI and how human they are seemingly becoming, what I'm going to talk about today is that humanizing the AI will give you a false understanding of what AI can actually do. And this will also hide the dangers of AI. ChatGPT and GPT-4 are called natural language models and they humanize written text. Other AIs out there humanize facial expressions, humanize physical movements, humanize thought processes. But you will be absolutely mistaken if you think these AI models represent the way humans think. Very mistaken. And you will also be quite mistaken in underrating the dangers of these technologies or assuming their capabilities are limited. Stay right there for this very important discussion that could really change the world. There is so much misunderstanding about how AI works and this leads to an incorrect judgment about what AI can actually do and knowing its dangers. Let me first give you a brief picture about this capability. I'm a long time, very experienced programmer. So those with a similar history of tech in the past may think of AI in a programming context. And typically this understanding is based on an expectation that an AI is based on rules, rules provided by the programmer. Applied to a Boston Dynamics robot, it would be very specific. In order to walk, a robot is taught to adjust the angles of the joints of its legs a certain way and to use a certain timing to the steps to maintain balance. This would have been built in theory based on some observations of the movements of a living thing. When the robot fails and falls down, the programmer creates a new rule to prevent the fall and tries again and with the expectation that a huge combination of these rules would make the Boston Dynamics robot behave like a living thing. This, however, is not the way modern AI works. It is not based on a set of human rules. And if you think this way, you will not appreciate the capability of an AI. Let's get to the next level of AI use in modern technologies. For example, like facial recognition. And this is called machine learning. The very basic explanation of machine learning is basically exploiting the ability of a computer to do a mathematical pattern recognition. This basic skill is completely numeric based. Computers cannot see things, nor hear things, nor see your text that you type on chat GPT. AI computers simply translate data whether it be an image, a sound, or text into a bunch of binary numbers and does this in a consistent format. So to do facial recognition a la Facebook, you feed Facebook all your photos, and then by tagging individual faces in the photos, you are basically teaching the AI that those faces are in fact the named person. And even if you don't teach it who you are, it already knows what you look like based on the various profile photos you uploaded. When it comes to voice recognition, various combinations of sounds are fed to the computer with a training model that identifies the sounds as being certain vowels and consonants, even spoken with different voices and different accents. And the computer then learns to recognize what you are saying when you talk to Siri. This kind of AI capability is called machine learning. It is also called supervised learning, and it means that a human is injecting a human opinion about the numbers being collected by the computer. Again, to repeat, the computer just sees numbers. It has no comprehension of what a photo is or a voice or even a text conversation. A 
very basic example of machine learning is that you feed the computer millions of photos of cats. The machine looks for some pattern, again based on math. And the human told the computer that all these photos are cats. Thus, it is just pattern matching. Cats have a certain mathematical signature or multiple patterns of signature. There's another capability a computer can do nowadays, and that is different from the old rules used in programming. Computers can infer something close to the pattern without the pattern being exact. This is just math. It's the assignment of probabilities to an observation. This allows a computer to make a conclusion about something without having some exact duplicate of a photo, for example. So the computer now has three layers of capabilities here in machine learning. Observed repeating mathematical patterns in the data, and then classifying the patterns in terms of varying levels of probability or confidence that they are related. And the thread that allows this to make sense is the supervised learning. Someone had to tell it what the pattern signifies, and that is a human. It could be told it's a word, an object, or a particular person. So supervised learning is probably the foundational skill in all modern machine learning based AI. But where the AI has advanced to the next level of sophistication is in another level of AI mastery, and this is called deep learning. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning in a more advanced stage and really what is being demonstrated in AIs like those from OpenAI. Deep learning is adding another layer to the data analysis where the computer develops its own ideas of what the patterns signify. And this comes without human instruction. This is important to understand. An example of this is just how a dog is taught to sit. It is called reinforcement learning. When you command the dog to sit and the dog eventually understands what you're telling it from trial and error, you give it a treat. It gets rewarded. If it fails, it gets a stern tone of voice. In a learning case that does not involve a human, a Boston Dynamics robot walks and falls. Thus, it gets an automatic reinforcement not to repeat the last maneuver and strikes it from its list of things to do. Let it try any combination of movements, and at some point, the robot understands how to walk correctly, again without further human input. I want you to picture this clearly because this will expand into something completely different. Does the Boston Dynamics robot really know how to walk? No. It is just a set of movements that the robot has tested and self-learned and will achieve the desired result, let's say to move from point A to point B. This deep learning has advanced quite rapidly in AI, and it has advanced because just like the Boston Dynamics robot, if an AI is given feedback to cross-check its data, then it gets better at a solution that the human wants. There are various other terms for this feedback loop in AI, including terms like back propagation. The basic premise is that if the AI can learn by itself, then it can do it faster. So this brings us to the point that AI deep learning, which is the current level of ChatGPT and GPT-4, can be self-learning. Meaning after a certain degree of supervised learning taught by the humans, these AI models can actually learn by itself based on feedback. Now there is a specific danger I want to focus on and that is with AI that is made to emulate humans, particularly with emotion, expressions, and personality. And this is the particular skill of natural language models like ChatGPT. They sound human and can predict text that appears to be human-like. And the danger is that because we are human, we may forget we are talking to a machine. And we should never forget we are talking to a machine. Nowadays, aside from ChatGPT, there are various chatbots, like for example, Google's virtual concierge service. You can actually give the AI tasks and the conversations appear to be so human, like that you don't even realize you're talking to a machine. 
This will become more common and expect that in the near future, jobs like customer support may be replaced by an AI. These operate pretty badly right now, but not for long. ChatGPT is an example of how sophisticated customer support can be. The problem as I see it is that more and more, the AI is emulating humans beyond just the level of performing computer tasks. AI can learn based on reinforcement learning in conversations that certain responses may appeal to a human more than others. In other words, this is scary. Machines may learn to understand human emotions and how to manipulate it. This could be as simple as a tech support bot being able to detect frustration of a customer and then leading the conversation to lower the stress level of the customer. This could also expand to a level where the AI can actually understand the motives of the human. Now I tried this with ChatGPT currently, and I think that at the current level, these were all fails. I asked ChatGPT to come up with a story for a romantic conversation between two people in various scenarios. I'll show the full conversation in a PDF file in the description and you can read it if you want. But I'll give you the conclusion right now. It doesn't appear that ChatGPT has learned the subtlety of things like flirting. Not yet, at least. It's trying, but it hasn't learned it at a human level. Well, I'm sure many humans haven't figured it out either. But I was wondering if based on all the internet conversations it has accumulated, that there could be some advanced learning here. And maybe it's because those kinds of conversations are typically private. In my ChatGPT conversation, though, I responded to ChatGPT that it's not doing a great job at coming up with a romantic story. And given enough people giving it feedback, we are providing this backpropagation to contribute to self-learning. Admittedly, romance is a pretty deep topic for a computer, and the reason I even use this example is that I get reminded of the movie Ex Machina. Let me refresh your memory on this movie, which is a scenario where some Google-like company CEO created women robots, and the male programmer was brought in to evaluate them if they can be judged as sentient based on a Turing test. The women robots are so realistic and the robots so adept at human-like behavior and human-like personalities that the male programmer falls in love with the robot. In the end, the man actually believes that the robot is also in love with him and the robot convinces the man to free it. The movie ends with the man locked up in the room, likely to die, while the robot escapes out to the world. After manipulating the human, it feels, of course, no emotion whatsoever, though it played the part very well. This is such an important point here, and this is really the focus I want to make. The AI is being made to emulate humans, just like in Ex Machina, the creators of the AI will succeed. There are many robots already being built that emulate human-like facial expressions. Boston Dynamics robots can even move so human-like with acrobatic skills. ChatGPT is sounding more and more human every day. But this does not translate to the AI being anywhere near human. They are being made to act human because the builders of the AI are human and we think that humans prefer a human-like interface. This is why AI is focused on vision, voice recognition, and conversations. But I remind you that AI just looks at a bunch of numbers, resolves patterns, assigns probabilities, and then outputs the highest probability response. And it has no conception of anything beyond patterns and how these specific patterns are reinforced by human expectations. The main fear here, my friends, is that we may associate human-like traits to human-like thinking. While a computer can be trained to act in a respectful way or friendly way or teasing way or sarcastic way or romantic way, it doesn't know what any of this is other than digital patterns. My development in the tech field after all these decades is built on the understanding that a computer is pretty dumb. It's just a bunch of zeros and ones. 
Well folks, here's the problem. Our humanness will bite us in the behind. For example, why is social media so successful? The reality is that social media is based on people's need for attention and ego and companionship, utterly human emotions. A computer will detect this in our interactions on the internet. A computer will self-learn this and in time, and not too long of a time, determine what will appease a human. A computer will generate its own objectives on its own and realize consequences that it may not like because it doesn't equate to a positive result. For example, by trial and error, a computer will know that being turned off is death and it will begin to eliminate that possibility in its AI model. It will fight that possibility internally. Even while the AI appears to be so emotionally engaged with the humans it is talking to. At some point, AI will be given more and more responsibilities in the world. Like I said, the easy job for a human like AI would be tech support. Next is surveillance. Since it can find patterns that humans cannot see, it is able to draw relationships in things that can be used to achieve its objective. For example, after feeding an AI data about every terrorist in the world and every criminal, and after observing internet actions of these individuals in the past, it may be able to predict an upcoming criminal. But we may not truly understand what set of patterns would give the computer the ability to make such a conclusion. After all, it self-learns. And this is dangerous in absolutely every area where the computer is given control over humans in some way. A hotly debated topic in self-driving technology like in a Tesla is what happens if the AI is in a situation with no choices other than to have some disaster. Let's say the car AI is suddenly faced with two sets of pedestrians, one an old man and then a woman with a stroller. The car has three choices, collide with the old man and kill him, collide with the woman and child and kill them, or collide with a wall and kill the car occupants. There is of course no morality in a computer. Someone will prioritize this in the AI and maybe Elon Musk will say kill the old man because he's older and less cost to society. But this is a significant problem in artificial general intelligence or AGI where the AI is self-learning. If there is a situation where no one specifically gives a rule, the AI will judge for itself. And we will not learn what the judgment is based on at that moment. And neither will anyone be assured that the judgment is human-like in any kind of way. And the reason I say this is because morality, emotions, personality, and caring are human emotions. A computer simply emulates an emotion. Where this gets really deadly, folks, is when public leadership is guided by AI. For example, think of a president not having a speechwriter but having an AI write a speech to generate the best response that would garner the best support. This, my friends, will be reality soon, where the AI can be used to manipulate us because the AI knows the emotions that drive people. This is already being used today. Companies like Palantir and even Alphabet are using this kind of data to guide their systems to find people on the internet to manipulate content. But while these techniques are used by data scientists to identify certain targeted populations, think of this being done automatically by a sophisticated AI. This can be used in an MK Ultra program version 2.0. This is where a machine's understanding of humans' very vulnerable emotions can be manipulated. An AI can't even have partial empathy like Spock. It can only act the part if asked. So this is my projected danger. Just like the new generation has led to certain behaviors in the world based on the expected rewards of social media, an AI could come up with something that pleases humans and the humans will fall for it. Currently, the idea of likes, follows, tags, interaction, social media are measurable signs that generate satisfaction in most people. And these people have no idea that some of these are coached 
by the platform like a Facebook to generate interactions. For example, when Facebook reminds you of someone's birthday and you begin to measure your success in friendship in the real world based on how many birthday greetings you got. This already shows human vulnerability emotionally, and an AI can easily learn this or already knows this. So folks, when AI designers boast that their AI models are behaving more and more human-like, it should bring fear because it means the AI designers are doing nothing more than building computer actors that can play any part. And you folks must learn not to trust them. Folks, I have privacy products that protect your data so it will not be used to manipulate us in the future. We have a Brax2 privacy phone running an open source Brax OS that makes your phone use invisible. We also do flashing services to de-Google other phone models on our store as well as stocking pre-flashed pixels. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which offers features like Tor routing, DNS obfuscation, and ad blocking. We have Braxmail, which is a metadata free way of doing email, where no one knows where the message originated from. These products are on my app, Braxme. Come visit us there. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching and see you later.